There was once a merchant so rich, he could have paved the streets with gold. And dressed his son in the finest clothes. But he didn't. The merchant was a mean and miserly old man. Hurry up, Sven! Oh! Oh! But, Father, my feet hurt! Well, of course they do. You've no shoes. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. Two thousand eight hundred and one. Two thousand eight Every night, Sven would escape into his dreams. He would invent stories in his head about castles and princesses. <laughs> ah. And every day, Sven would entertain the other children with his fantastical stories. You wanted to see me, Your Highness? Oh, Prince Sven! Marry me, you handsome devil! Hooray! Yay! Marry him! Marry him! What have I told you about your silly stories? It's money that makes the man The years passed, and the mean old merchant died. Sven had become a young man, and a fine storyteller. Sven, as your father's only son, you shall inherit all his wealth. You mean I'm rich? Oh, very rich. Uh, maybe you should think about investing the money. Well, I've always wanted a pair of shoes. Uh, I see. Uh, as long as you don't let all that money change you. Why not? I don't want people to think I'm just a poor storyteller. Wealthy people always seem to have the most fun and the most friends. But you're a wonderful storyteller. And stories are for dreamers. And who needs to dream when you've got money, right? Which reminds me, I must buy myself some solid gold trousers. Sven never had any money before. Sometimes. When someone has been missing something all their life, they can get a little excited when it finally arrives. Magnificent! You truly are a genius. Oh, thank you, sir. You're too kind. But there's still something missing. More coins, sir? Yes! Sven now had lots of friends, or so he thought. Great party, Stan. Sven. Great. I was thinking, it's not very fair that we're always holding parties at your place. Don't be silly, you're my friends. Great. So I thought if you bought us all fancy houses, we wouldn't have to bother you every night. <gasps> Buy everybody a fancy house just so they can have their own parties? Yes. That's a great idea. No. Who wants a fancy house? Thank you, sir. I have to go and see my tailor, but before I do, I'd also like to pay for all my dear friends. Thanks, Stan. Uh, Sven. Great. Oh. Oh. I am so sorry. I've made such a mess. Oh, don't worry about it. You go on ahead. We'll clean up. 
Okay. I owe you one. Fight through! Honor my spirit! Ah. Oh, careful. Then this is not good. If you keep on spending like this, are those gold? Do you like them? This has to stop. You'll be broke by the morning. Don't be silly. I don't believe this. I've nothing left. Except this lamp. <gasps> of course, my friends. What was I thinking? Who needs money when you've got friends? Hey, where's the party? What happened? I ran out of money, but hey, who cares, right? Wait! I can still tell stories. They don't cost anything. Yeah, that's because they're not worth anything. Oh, how could they just desert me like that? I knew it. I knew you wouldn't desert me. Are you sure you don't have anything else left? I'm afraid that's it. Great. Bye, Stan. Sven. I'm afraid you're going to have to sell your house to honor your debts. But I never even got to meet a princess. Surely I've still got a little money. Sorry, Sven. I even had to melt down your trousers this morning. <gasps> no. I have nothing left. Nothing. Maybe I could sell my hair to a bald man. Don't you want your trunk? A trunk? Well, I thought that since you are now homeless, you might live in it. I can't live in there. It doesn't even have a bathroom. <laughs> oh, great. A key for the lock. Now nobody can get in and steal all my nothing. live in such an exquisite home. Why? Yes, I'm afraid that was me. Look, I'm ever so sorry about your shop. An angel has fallen from the sky! And he's chosen my shop to fall on! Actually, I'm not an angel. It was a mistake. Um, I'm afraid I don't have any money. But I had been planning to sell my hair. I could use that money to buy glue. Wow! 
Why have you chosen my stall, sweet angel? I'm so honoured. This is the greatest thing that's happened to me since the princess's horse sat on my foot. Princess? What princess? She lives in the palace, but you can't call on her. The Sultan and Sultana don't approve. Nobody's good enough for their daughter. I'm sure I'll find a way. I'm sure you will. My glorious angel. Doing? Nothing. You were going to kiss me! No, 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 no! Oh. Yes. Are you really a princess? I'm getting the guards. No, wait! It wasn't my fault. I couldn't help myself. Your eyes hypnotized me. What? Your eyes. Glorious dark lakes with thoughts swimming in them like mermaids. Do you really think so? Oh, yes. And your nose. My nose? They don't make sneezes pretty enough for that nose. And my ears? Well, they're nice too. Oh, you do say the sweetest things. Are you a storyteller? Actually, I'm... Sven was afraid to tell the truth. After all, who would want a poor storyteller? An angel. An angel? What's an angel doing in my room? I came down from the heavens to ask you to marry me. Say yes, say yes, say yes. Hmm. Yes! No. It will be a fairy tale wedding. The angel and the princess. What are you talking about? I can't marry you. We've just met. And what would my parents, the Sultan and Sultana, say? Don't Fret, my princess. What parents would not want to see their daughter married to an angel? Didn't you hear what I said? I can't marry you. Oh, you worry too much. Is it not true that if I can win the approval of the Sultan and Sultana, then I may marry you? Uh, oh dear. Yes, that's true. But I really don't think it's a good idea. You don't even know me. Besides, nobody ever impresses the Sultan and Sultana. I will return tomorrow to win them over. Um, Princess, before I go, could I have a memento of our first meeting? I suppose. How about a lock of my hair? Well, the thing is, I don't want to ruin your hair before the wedding. How about the sword? Now, off you go. Thanks. I'll cherish it always. This is gold, isn't it? Goodbye. Hmm. I have a very bad feeling about this. Oh. <gasps> Time to make myself presentable. By your fallen angel from the very shop he landed on. Oh, the angel has returned. Listen, I'm not really an angel. Not a real angel. <laughs> what do I 
care if you're not a real angel. Just don't tell the customers. I sold 15 of those statues today. Look, I probably owe you this. And may I say how lovely you're looking today, sir. Thank you. It's for the Sultan and Sultana. I'm meeting them tomorrow to ask for their daughter's hand in marriage. Oh, oh that's great news. Not really. I'm broke. They'll never let me marry her. Oh, it won't be easy. Nobody's good enough for their princess. All they care about is royalty and stories. Stories? They like stories? <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. But the Sultan likes them merry, but the Sultana likes them moral. <laughs> Try telling one of those. I can do it. I'm a storyteller. You better be a real good one. Did you ever hear the story of the ice skating squirrels? That was one of yours? Oh, yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a story to write. <laughs> Sultan likes them merry, but the Sultana likes them moral. Hmm. I haven't been this happy since I was a little boy, dreaming up stories in my room. That's it! I've got it! Woohoo! I find it very difficult to believe we're expecting an angel to lunch. He'd better be an angel. If he's been lying to our little princess. Oh, don't worry, child. I know an angel when I see one. And if I'm... Good grief. An angel. Your Majesty's the Angel. He has to be an angel. But what if he's not a real angel? He seemed a little... Mm, funny. But did you not see how he flew? Arise. Thank you, Your Majesties. Young man, if you are truly an angel, you must have brought a wedding gift from the heavens? I brought no gift. <laughs> All I brought is a story. Mm -hmm. What kind of story? It's a merry story. Oh. <laughs> but it's also a moral story. <laughs> there was once a bundle of matches who thought they knew exactly what they wanted. So the matches lied and made up stories about themselves. Did you really come from a great fir tree? Oh, oh yes, yes, a great, great fir tree, tree that lived, lived in the sunshine all day. We were richer than all the other trees too. We could afford to stay green all year round. Oh, what happened to the rest of the tree? Oh, after, after we were cut, cut down, the rest of the tree became the mast of a fine ship, ship that, that travels the world. Oh. But the tinderbox was not impressed. Oh. Why can't you just be happy to be a bundle of matches? Oh, I'm sorry for you, tinderbox. Your only life has been lighting fires. But, but I have, have had so many other, other more exciting adventures. How lucky we are to have such greatness in our kitchen. Yes, we should be honoured. See how much they like me, Tinderbox. <gasps> Everybody in the kitchen wondered who she had come for. Surely, they thought, it was for the great matches. She's come to light the fire. But will she use the old tinderbox or the matches? Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me! Pick me, pick me, pick me! 
But the matches who had worried so much about looking grand burned out. <gasps> oh, bravo! Yes, bravo! Oh, Excellent! I'm really not sure I understand the story. Hush, child. Your mother has something to say. Young man, we would be honored if you would marry our daughter. <gasps> On the evening before the wedding, the people of the city celebrated. The festivities were very impressive, but Sven thought that if he did something really special, the people would love him even more. Now you be careful. These things can be dangerous. Ah, how grand I look. so hard to impress. Oh, how great everybody must think I am. Oh, oh! Uh-oh. Oh! Whoa! I've lost my money, my trunk, and even my princess! Why does it have to be like this? Why? I can't go on without her! <laughs> I need you, my sweet, sweet princess. But princess... Princess... Wait a minute. I didn't even ask her name. I never loved money and princesses. I just loved the stories. Sven had learned an important lesson. From that day forward, he never tried to be anybody but himself. Now Sven wanders the world telling fairy tales. And when the young man turned the key, the trunk began to fly. Ooh. As for the princess, she was glad she didn't marry the angel. Instead, she waited for true love. She finally understood the story of the matches in the kitchen. For just like the matches who tried so hard to impress everybody, the angel had burned out. Mm-hmm. <laughs>